So we're going to load that number six into this white, pull the bristles through the paint, because you want it to be, you don't want just a glob of paint on your brush. You want to load the brush with paint and water to make it nice and slick and good. All right, so let's make some daisies. I want to fix these mistakes I made before and really try to get them looking good. So I'm gonna, I'm probably not gonna talk <laughs> because it's easier for me when I don't talk. And when you add the centers too, that is gonna bring everything to life. So that looks fairly decent. You know, it, it has a shape. Let me do this little bud. And I'm going to add a calyx to this, too, so that'll cover up um, the bottom there. So this was the one that was going to be on the bottom, so I'll do that first. Really? Yeah, no, I'll do it. And I'll just... Um, do that one after I do that one and it'll. So I hope you're seeing what I'm doing. I'm hoping you're getting this. And look, it's you don't get it overnight. It's not something that you're just born knowing how to do. You have to practice. And one of the things I can tell you is there's a little bit of this here with your thumb, how I'm flipping it, you kind of push down and you're turning it with your thumb when you pick up. So, you know, if you were here with me, it'd be easier for me to show you how to do it. And we would practice on the paper palette or just a piece of paper um, because there is a trick to it. Not a trick, but you know, um, it takes a minute to be able to, to put your piece down and um, I mean, put your brush down and get this kind of reaction. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but get the brush to do what you want it to do, react the way you want it to react. Um, and I painted for years and I've done three pieces today. This is my third piece today. So I've been making a lot of strokes today. And it took me a minute to reestablish, like this looks, it'll look so much better, but like I probably needed one out to the side to kinda, these should have been more pointed out to the side to have like that daisy look. Um, and some of your daisies would probably look way better than mine because I'm not like a realist and stuff and you know how to do that better than me maybe, you know? So, all right, this one I have to totally fix, so I'm gonna be quiet. Right, that's it that's all our daisies and I mean you can see the blue kind of popping out from underneath and it's not a biggie I'm gonna let them dry for a minute and then we're gonna add little detail lines to them but in the meantime we're gonna do something different we're gonna get this angle brush and if you don't have an angle brush just use a flat but the thing about this is this is a technique called floating and I I did this in my other painting tutorial. I'm going to put this aside for a second. I want to show you on the wet. Oh my God. It's a paper palette. You want to, you're definitely going to use the water and my water's filthy, but get some water on your brush. Blot. I'm going to get green for right now. I just have a little tiny bit of green. I don't even know. There it is on the corner of my brush and I'm gonna go to my palette and I'm putting it down and I'm working that paint down the bristles. So see how it goes from dark to light to water. That's what floating is. 
So floating is floating the paint across the bristles. So what I need for this actually is some Payne's Gray, which is a really cool color. It's like a really, really dark purple blue. Um, put that on my palette because my battery's blinking. And I'm going to go ahead and we're going to shade all these little berries. And you need very little paint for this because these berries are tiny. So you really only need to corner load a teensy bit of paint onto the corner of your brush. Go to the palette here and work it in. Walk away from it. Put it down, walk away, walk back in. But don't get the other end into the paint. You want that to stay water so that there's a graduation. Okay? Then you're going to go to each one of these little blueberries and we're going to shade up against the stem. So the edge, the side where the stem goes, that's where we're going to put this dark blue. And if you can't do this, don't worry, don't, add, don't put berries on your piece. Just have daisies and um, leaves and that's the one stroke that you'll learn from this piece. You don't need to do this. This is just an added thing that I love the berries and I was actually going to put strawberries on here and little bees. <laughs> and I thought I'm getting carried away because I need you guys to master one thing at a time. So this part is called floating and those of you who know what I'm talking about um, or who have done decorative painting before, go ahead and float some Payne's Gray. And I can't really see what I'm doing. There's such a shine on this uh, wood. I'm being a little messy, but that's okay because I will fix it. Um, you really want all the bristles on the surface. I can't see, I'm trying to get it around and under. Um, reloading because I had too much paint. And I just went, I rinsed my brush and just went right back into the um, paper palette. Now I need a little more color. Yeah, this is definitely um, a touch and go, I want to say, but it's you have to just play and check and load your brush and go back and forth until you get the desired result is what I want to say. Okay, so that looks like they're all shaded. I hit all my berries. I'm going to do this one a little bit darker. Let them dry. And we're going to take that Payne's Gray and a little bit of the, um, the shadow color that we used, um, the blue haze. It was this color. So I'm going to take a little bit of that Payne's Gray and mix it with that blue haze now. And this color we're going to use to just with that script liner, make it real wet and inky so it flows off your brush like ink. And put that on the daisies like this. You're just going to kind of make these little detail lines. Um, and I'm a heavy hand, so these are actually quite dark. I don't know. But you know, once we put our centers on, uh, you can put two, three, four, five, as many as you want. They're like little hairs. Oh, that's, see? Q-tip, little spit, get it off. Go back. And I like to follow the curve of the, of the petal itself too, with these lines, like so it helps. I just have to change my battery real quick. So these are, again, very, very fine lines. Mine are a little dark. I'm not liking how dark I'm making them. I think I did them better the first time. Don't, you know, I'm putting too many or something's going on. So, um, you know, you don't want your whole petal to turn blue. Um, and actually, on her piece, she has you do another highlight, which just on the tip, kind of leaving, um, what did she call it? Like a roll of paint on the tip of the um, petal to kind of give it a curl almost. And I didn't do that. I really wanted to keep it as simple as possible. So um, we're not going to do that. But if you make these too dark, you can always go back over your petal, um, you know, and add some 
more weight to it because you don't want the it really should just be down in the in the in the bottom so this very last one that I'm doing here this one's looking the most realistic so there's my very liney daisies but now we're gonna do the fun part we're gonna take this maple sugar tan and it's kind of like a really kind of almost a beigey yellow I love maple sugar put that on my palette and this is a specialty brush it's a cool brush I have two that we're going to use. This one's called a deer foot. And you can kind of tell why if I hold it right at the right angle. It looks like a little hoof. It's cut, it's a stubby round brush and it's cut on an angle like a hoof. And it's great for doing um, certain techniques. So then this one is a, what does it say on it? It's a stippler. And I bought these in a set, so I have several um, different sizes. And this is by, oh my God, there's paint all over. Oh, it's a low Cornell. And I think they may even sell these at Michael's or AC Moore. This one has no paint in it. This one I haven't cleaned, so it's kind of stiff, but it still works. I'm gonna load that with that um, maple sugar. So what I'm doing is, I'm taking this flat brush, this is a stippler, and I have the tip of it loaded in the, in the paint. And I'm gonna bounce it on my palette, and then I'm gonna go to my piece. And while the paint is wet, I'm gonna side load the bottom of it in raw sienna, or actually burnt sienna, which I didn't get out yet. So I gotta put some burnt sienna on my palette and I'm going to just take the bottom couple bristles, bounce that on my palette, and then shade the bottom of the center with that while it's still wet. So I kind of did two at a time. But that gives it like a shaded look. So I'm just wiping that on my napkin, and I'm going to reload in the maple sugar, bounce it on my palette, and go to this one. I'm kind of making them a little wider. I think that makes them look a little more daisy-like. I don't know. <laughs> little. Okay, and then I'm just going to put the edge of that in the burnt sienna and go right along the bottom of that. Or what I deem the bottom. I think I want it a little darker, so I added a little more. So that, and then I have one more up top. So I'm just wiping the brush on my paper towel, reloading and the maple sugar, and bouncing it along there into kind of like an oval shape. I don't like that daisy. That daisy's kind of weird the way it has like no side petal. A little burnt sienna on the edge, and then bounce that along the bottom while it's still wet. And that's your centers. We're gonna let that dry and then we're gonna highlight those in a little bit. Meanwhile, we're gonna go back to our berries and we're gonna highlight those in the same way that we shaded so it's a float. We're gonna put our brush in water, get a little bit of that base color that we used, which I think was, I used French gray blue on the corner, and then a little bit of white. I'm gonna put that down on my palette here and then a little bit of white and mix it, like kind of brush mix it and then rinse my brush because I only want a tiny bit of paint because these are tiny little berries and I'm just going to pick up a tiny bit of paint and make sure you're doing the opposite side of the berries so the part on the top, see look how white, that's too bright there's too much white, I gotta, um, I'm getting that off and I'm gonna rinse my brush and I'm just gonna go back to the base color, which is the, what is it? French gray blue. And I'm gonna, I have that on my brush now and I'm gonna go into that white puddle because it was just too um, bright. And hopefully this will tone it down and I'll, yeah, much, much better. It's still really bright and I have a lot of it on my bristles, but I think it'll be okay. And then I'm going to do these. We're going to add like a little um, 
star on the top of these. It's the coolest thing. I love it. It, it like totally makes the berry look real. I have these. So I have to turn. Turn your piece. I told you it's the best part about painting something small. You can turn it so that you're, you know, you don't have to work at a, at a difficult, or you know what I'm saying. <laughs> all right. So I've highlighted all my berries. I'm going to rinse my brush. And we're almost done. I forgot my calyx, so I'm going to get that, um, the one that we base coated the berries with. It's that um, number three round. And I'm going to do the same colors that we did the big green leaves with. I'm just going to take a little, so it's like, I'm just going to take a little on this side and flip it and a little on that side. So we're double loading around. It's same thing. Then I'm just going to blend it on my palette a little bit and kind of make little tiny leaves up here. I kind of like to make them a little like wiggly. So they're like, uh, like they're new leaves or something. That's not very dark. I want to add a little more dark color. So it shows up and maybe a little light. So just like three petals. They look terrible, but that's okay. All right, so I think we're pretty much good. The next thing I want to do is um, the little uh, stars on the end of these berries. So now, now we can just get a tiny bit of black out and we're gonna use our script liner again and get it nice and wet. And so we, it's like a, you know, you wanna get it like a pen, ink flowing out of a pen. And, sorry, I got paint on my hand. Um, we're gonna make these little stars, and it's actually like an A, a capital A. I'll show you what I do. I'm getting, it's almost time to switch off, um, to switch over, but look. So you make this A. That's what you're making. You're kind of making an A on top of all these, um, and you can, it's like a double A, like that, and then bloop, bloop. So can you see that? And I'll show you why. So I'm gonna um, stop and come back.